What's up, guys? So today we have a question by Jordan, uh, who says, um, what originally raised the suspicion of the postal inspector to your package? I've heard you say a few times that your cousin told on you and that they opened your package illegally. But how did they come to the decision to search your package? <clears throat> so more or less, uh, what happens is, you know, you can check out this document. I feel free to pause the video and read it. But basically, it's a, one of many emails um, that a postal employee had written to um, one of the agents, the Department of Homeland Security agents. They had went to <clears throat> all these different post offices showing pictures of me and my cousin uh, to these postal employees and asking them, you know, do you know this man? Do you know this woman? Um, let us know if you see either of them. Um, because they had already picked up on the fact that, you know, she was going through and mailing all these packages because she hadn't followed the protocol of, you know, you only send the packages out where the return addresses are from. So like, for example, if, you know, we're sending a package out from New Bedford, there's three packages that say, you know, New Bedford, Mass, um, with the same name. So it'd be like John Smith, John Smith, John Smith, and all three of them. And instead of her going and sending out those three packages, she would send out the packages from like, you know, New Bedford, Mass, uh, Fall River, uh, and Seekonk all in New Bedford, um, which is what m m caused suspicion. Now, none of that is actually illegal, right? Um, so you have reasonable suspicion and you have probable cause and reasonable suspicion is something that you don't like, you don't need very much to go on. Um, in order to, you know, be suspicious. It's just, you know, think about the terminology. Um, like if you, if, if you're, you know, law enforcement and you're in a state where cannabis is legal and you see like, you know, you know, people fishbowling, or if you're from the South hot boxing, uh, you know, where they're smoking a, a blunt in the car and windows are all smoky, like as law enforcement, that might be, you know, suspicious. You might classify that as, you know, reasonable suspicion. Um, now when you walk up to the car, you know, if you see inside of that car, you know, a empty baggie with, you know, a little cannabis in it or like, you know, a cannabis seed, stuff like that, scales, all that kind of stuff would add in your reasonable suspicion. And, you know, it might couple enough, depending on state laws, to equal out to probable cause. And once they have probable cause, they can do things like conduct searches. Um, now you'll know if they have probable cause because they'll ask you, "Do you mind if we search the vehicle?" If, if you if they say, "Do you mind if we search the vehicle?" It means they don't have enough evidence yet to lock you up or arrest you. Do you mind giving us some more evidence so we can incarcerate you? That's basically what they're saying to you. Um, my suggestion is you say no. You know, uh, I don't want to be searched. Can I search your cruiser? You know, don't 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 say that last part to him. But um, you know, they get all bent out of shape. You know, they can try to violate your rights, but you you know, you'd even joke about violating their rights. It's the end of the day. Um, so basically, um, the United States Postal Inspector he he didn't have either of those, right? <laughs> um, so he might might have had reasonable suspicion, but. Even in the case of her bringing in, you know, nine packages, three different return addresses on those nine. So, you know, a set of three packages with the same return address, set of three, set of three. Um, he still would not have probable cause, hardly even reasonable suspicion, really, because at the end of the day, sending packages out for someone else is not illegal. You know, you can mail a package for someone else. That's not illegal. Um, so to even say he had reasonable suspicion would be a stretch, right? And I knew already what was classified as suspicious, um, you know, and, you know, uh, what would give them probable cause, right? So like probable cause is something big. Like if they pick it up and white powder is pouring out of the box or, you know, cannabis is pouring out of the box. Like, you know, there's, you know, you, you see like it's taped at the top, but like you can see through it and you see, you know, a bunch of cannabis. You know what I mean? Like 
something like that. Um, absolutely gives them probable cause. Um, but it was nothing like that. It wasn't even, even their, their suspicion guidelines I had known and I had prevented. Um, so even with my cousin doing what she did, being lazy and complacent, um, at the end of the day, it, it was because they were willing to break the law to, you know, get her to flip, um, which is in the long run what ended up, you know, causing it. I digress. Um, so, um, you know, to answer your question, at the end of the day, um, it was just, you know, it was his decision he made um, to do it, to break the law. And, you know, from that decision, that's when, you know, he wrote a statement saying that, you know, he'd found these narcotics and, um, you know, as an affidavit signed and submitted to the judge. And then they use that and they say, well, we followed Geneva and this is where she's living. And that's what they use to get a federal search warrant. Um, and, you know, come in and search the house. Uh, so that's why, that's why it was illegal. But like to answer your question about like, you know, why he did it, um, he did it because he doesn't care about the law pretty much, you know, um, like, you know, you see, I, I see this, I've seen this a ton meeting people and people in like federal prison where like you have like ghost weight in feds. So like if, if person A buys, you know, Coke off person B and person A rats on person B and there's no drugs. Right. But like they, person A says, Oh, I bought a kilo from him you know, every week, you know, um, and like the government has no evidence to support this. They only have the testimony of person A, like they can absolutely, and they will absolutely go after person B and charge them with, you know, the sale of 50 keys or 52 keys, if it was a year or whatever, you know, however, however many years or weeks are in a year, you know, um, uh, like they will, they will go after, and that's called, it's called ghost weight. Um, and they will give you decades in prison based on ghost weight with no evidence whatsoever, aside from, you know, some rats sworn testimony, um, who was probably facing a case and did it to get out of doing decades himself. Um, or was just threatened and, you know, he had scared. Um, so like, but that's, you know, to answer your question, um, he did it because like the federal uh, system has a conviction rate of 99%. Like imagine having, imagine, you know, being an MMA fight, MMA fighter or, or a chess champion, having that kind of victory, like that rate of victory after a hundred years, that's what our federal system is. You know, um, it's just, it's super corrupt and like, they'll do whatever they want to do, you know, um, and you'll accept it. So that 1% of people who can beat the case, that was me. Um, but because my cousin had already flipped, there was nothing I could do about it. So I had to take that plea and I became one of those 99% when I could have been one of the 1%. Um, but I'm glad that happened because it made me who I am. You know, it's one of the reasons I can sit in front of this camera and tell you guys all about it, you know? Um, so, um, his suspicion, you know, it was, it was raised, you know, most likely, um, because, you know, I hate to put it like this, but, you know, Vermont is something like 96% Caucasian. And like my cousin is African-American, she's mulatto, but, uh, she's African-American. So, you know, that I have no doubt that's one of the factors that went into it. You know, can I prove it? No, I can't. Um, but I've read his handbook on what's, defined as suspicious um what's defined as you know something that gives him probable cause and none of my packages met the criteria of any of that because of the guidelines i have based on his own handbook so he uh he just wanted to do it he thought it was okay to do um and you know it wasn't even though it's illegal there were no repercussions for him you know and that's the issue with our justice system you know or injustice system is that you know, the people who enforce these laws are more, you know, criminal than some of the people who violate them. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and um, see you in the next one.